Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we started off our court day, our first court day, and seems things seemed like they were getting rough, but Edgeworth thankfully came in with a save and said that he wanted to cross-examine Adrian Andrews and that he had her on standby just in case. So now we're just going to recess for a little bit and then we'll hop right in and go off, uh, and we'll be able to cross-examine Adrian Andrews. Dude, I can't believe that Adrian... No way. Not cool and collected Adrian Andrews. She is your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at the dinner was... Well, her. So after the ceremony, during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your hakama. Hmm, <laughs> because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she is the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corita. But why? I thought she was just buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix, you think her motive is related to Celeste, Celeste Impax's missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impax for her strength and will to live. But then Miss Impax suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note, and the person thought to have hidden it is Juan Corita, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corita. Yeah, all to get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Mr. An- I think that means- I think that's supposed to say Miss Andrews's codependency with regards to Miss Impax. It was Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Corita's room. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Matt on guard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Uh, yes, sure, what is it? I am sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Ah, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relationship to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Carita. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between M Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm, so it was a fry and bait matter. Was that bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. <laughs> but I... But I didn't kill him. No one has accused you of that. I've got a feeling someone will soon. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well then. Witness, please testify to the court. About what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. What I saw was, naturally, the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. 
You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of a crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix, she is the one cool and collected customer, and she is the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontation. You should disrupt her pace. Disrupt her pace? She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking. So you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over. Understand? I'm trying to distinguish between Mia's voice and Adrian's voice. Because they're both, like, strong women characters who, you know, are planning things like three steps ahead and stuff like that. And so I'm trying to make Mia's voice, like, a bit higher pitched and a bit more lively. Uh, which is funny because she's dead. And then Adrian's is a bit lower and a bit more... Emotionless, I guess, is what I'm going for. Anyways, and what was Mr. Engard doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Hmm, Mr. Engard did say he was taking a nap. Then I guess you could say he could not have been taken out of his room, yes? Excuse me? It? What are you... Right, I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. If you can't make a sensible sentence with the subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. Ungod's knife from his room? No. Hmm. Subject, verb, object, right? Did you skip basic grammar? The witness may continue. After that, I went to Juan's room. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture, Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Let's press further here. Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim. Sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at the time. Can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got to his room? And there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. So this is actually one that uh, is important to press. You were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be sh Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Karita. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock, and you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow, I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm, I see. Is that actually the exact same scene as in the crime scene photo? This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yes. The one with the knife lodged in his chest. And the guitar case was like this too? Yes. It was open and empty, of course. And then what did you do next, witness? Here's another important one to press. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Juice? Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. But did you? But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on the wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down, without drinking it. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corita, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank? 
I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? Miss Andrews. I'm convinced that, as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm, actually, so would I. I, I, I'm sorry, it's just, it's kind of embarrassing. When I, when I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? This mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser. But when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto my guitar case. Why would you... Why did you withhold such important information? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, the people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry. But... I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. I was the one who knocked the flower vase over where it fell onto the guitar case. What kind of flower vase was it? It was a glass vase, and it was fairly big and heavy. I thought I would try to take Juan's pulse, so I set the glass I was holding down on the dresser. And that's when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. That's odd. I thought she was always in total control of herself. That's what she would like people to think. Always be mindful of the gap between the perception and reality. It doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. I warned you earlier that she would not crack so easily. The only way to make her... The only way to make her is to keep on the offensive and not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some very strong, decisive evidence. Yeah, I have to find something. I just have to. For Maya's sake. So, the solution for this one is to press this statement about her being in shock, and then press the statement about pouring a glass of juice. Pressing further on that unlocks a new statement, the one about knocking the flower vase over. And the interesting thing about that is, if she knocked the flower vase over, obviously water would spill everywhere, right? Uh... Interesting thing about the water is if we go over to the guitar case, it says it's empty, there's some water, but only on the top but only on top of the lid. Which is very strange. Objection. You testified that you knocked the flower vase over. Is this correct? Yes. And you, are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? Is there a problem with what I said? It's not some problem. It's a major problem. It's true that on top of the guitar case... It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However... If that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. That's very true. Furthermore, there's one other strange thing about this guitar case. And what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong and what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Aha! And what is your point, right? The case was closed the time the vase was knocked over. Is that all? No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. Mm. Yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. But... But this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. 
The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing on the case at all. That may very well be. However, an empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case. Hmm. It seems that there's no d deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Let's make her testify. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. Alright, I'll follow along. For now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Hmm, it looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. Um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Hmm, using anyway to change the topic, a convenient escape for a weak man. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. So there is a big contradiction here, but we're just gonna go ahead and press around for a bit. It's very interesting to see Edgeworth like on top of his game because you know he's constantly shutting us down like no that's not it, no that's not it, no that's not it. But he did have Adrian Andrews ready and called her to the stand when it was completely unnecessary, which is a bit weird. During your testimony just now, did you remember those events clearly in your mind? Well, you see. Are you sure you are the one who opened the guitar case? She's... She's waiting for someone to tell her if she should answer or not. Her codependency is coming through, huh? Well, Miss Andrews? Y yes, it was me. I suppose I must have opened the guitar... I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. So, you opened the guitar case, then? Y yes well, maybe. Why did you open the guitar case? Huh? Mr. Karita's dead body was right there in front of you, wasn't it? I would think that the first thing you would do is call for help, not open a guitar case. As the witness has said multiple times, when she found the dead body... She was dazed. Hmm... Maybe I... Maybe I was curious to know if the bright red guitar was alright or not. I thought, maybe the criminal took it. Why would she care about the bright red guitar? But getting back on topic. Not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. Was it really empty? I was just wondering if maybe when you opened the case, the guitar was still inside. How long have you been a lawyer, Mr. Wright? Have a little professionalism. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. These trials would be over in half the time if you would just pay attention. Yes, pay more attention, Mr. Wright. Sorry. That's where I opened the case, even I don't know. Was that because you were shocked and dazed at dis discovering the victim's body? Yes, that's probably it. I'm not going to get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk is with evidence. Guess I should give it a try. Come on, Phoenix. We can't afford to let up on her now. I wasn't planning on letting up, but... She's at her weak weakest now, so this is our chance. Yeah, if we had a weapon to hit her with. I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the court record, waiting to be found. So it's very interesting to see, even in testimony number two, Adrian Andrews' uh, facade is already cracking under the pressure. There's no way you were the one who opened the guitar case. Why would you say that? 
It's elementary, my dear. Nice reference. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. Ah! What is it, Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves? But why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony, so of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, I see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. That's strange. You were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Well, we actually do. If we look over at the wine glass, it very clearly bears Andrews' fingerprints. I have your proof right here. This wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. Ah. Uh -huh. Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, wouldn't you think it was just a little strange? Did you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? Ah! Uh -huh. Order. Order. Order! Looks like you hit the nail on the head this time. Hm? What do you mean? I believe that guitar case plays a very important role here, but it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty, though. B but the guitar, the bright red guitar was at the studio. Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not it either. <laughs> hmm, I admit it would be very unnatural for someone to do that. So the, wit so the witness was not wearing gloves, despite the fact that, on the case... Your Honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided... No, Your Honor. Please recall that Miss Andrews has testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it was wide open in this photo of the crime scene. I'm sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, right, then I'm sh then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, cor correct? Please, enlighten us as to why that guitar case has anything at all to do with this murder. Uh, can you do that, Mr. Wright? Um, well... Let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing. Y you don't mean to suggest that a bright black guitar was... So, you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty. Is that it, right? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove. Deflate that head of yours. You haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside the case at the time of the murder? It's a bit of a crazy idea, but it might be the costume that's in this photograph. This is... this is a photograph. This photograph was in the guitar case? Uh, no, but what is most important is what is in the picture, Your Honor. In this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai, the hero's very own costume. What? M Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right, are you saying that the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave. Could you, Miss Andrews? I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? 
Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot, correct? You... You mean this photo? Order. Order! It looks like we've wandered into quite another mess again, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. Hmm. So the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room? And inside the guitar case of all places? Hmm, true. That is a little baffling. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was this Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? It was a spare costume. Mr. Rengard did not take his costume off during this break period. In that case, the costume we are talking about was a spare one. What? Then, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there were two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I am saying. And how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean the victim himself had planned to bring the spare into the ceremony. But, but why? The victim, Mr. Corita, was the German ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? Uh, so that's what he intended. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling all this time without any sense of inner monologue? Huh? N no, I just... Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer, and then answer with gusto. I believe in you. Alright, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was because of the press conference going on. What is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yes, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at this conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up right. But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ungard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can only mean one thing. The conference was set up. By none other than the victim, Mr. Juan Corita himself. The, the victim? Yes. The spare knuckle samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corita was going to hold the press conference as the Nickel Samurai. He was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai and hold a press conference? But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at that conference. The Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Corita, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession, that's public disclosure. Hmm. Miss Andrews? I can see why you are pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him. That was also me. Y you Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked like somehow... Juan had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. What? And you know what this secret of Mr. Rengard's is, Miss Andrews. 
That's something only Juan knew. I... I don't know what it is. Ah, I see. I... I've probably become, been coming off quite suspicious to everyone. But that's to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. But protect Mr. Unguard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could please tell us about the truth of your behavior. Yes, Your Honor, I understand. And this is something that we're going to have to leave off until the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!